we were over the moon. We were ecstatic about that. And like you said, just to, or like Lars said, you know, we got to do this for the swim run community. So they, they rewarded us with a great time, lots of registrations, positive feedback. We loved it. Welcome to the Low Tide Boys, a swim run podcast. I'm Chip. And I'm Chris. And this is episode 67 of the show. On the show this week, we have the one and only Aaron Pallian from Odyssey Swim Run. He has a really interesting backstory, and we we discuss everything from his roots in endurance sports to orcas and bears in Alaska to driving cross-country while flying the Swim Run flag and so much more. So this is a really fun one, and more on that later in the show. Yeah, it was cool to get a look into how Odyssey's leveling up their game, their Swim Run game. And it would be funny if there were just one flag that just said Swim Run on it. There's just one, and you have to pass it around. But like, yeah. I'm flying the swim run flag. The there's just anyway. I think we would have it for now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On to training updates. So we are continuing to do our training. We're doing swimming tower 26. We we sound we feel like we're sounding like a broken record. So we're going to table this segment yes. until we get to do swim run training. Yeah. Once we're Pacific actually training running. for an event, then we'll start chronicling a little bit more because. It just seems kind of humble braggy to be like, yo, we're crushing major yards in the pool. Slaying yards in the pool, man. Yeah. Uh, but if uh, if there's something more you want or less you want from the training update area, just let us know. Now, on to this week's shout outs. Yeah, so this week we're shouting out the whole country of Taiwan. Um, wow. They've recently climbed into the top 10 kind of out of nowhere in oh. terms of downloads by country. And yeah, we just love seeing that. So it still blows our mind that people are listening to the show, period, and that they're listening from all over the world. Um, and we just super full of gratitude, people letting us in their ears. So thank you very much. Shay Shay. Shay Shay. On to this week's feats of endurance. We're pretty sure we've awarded this before, but our friend and fellow Novato, Novadian, Novato resident Sarah Ferguson. Novadoan. Novadoan wins this week. Novadoite? Novato person. Yeah. Novato resident. Sarah Fergit wins this week. Congratulations, Sarah. Here's what she did. Hope you all are sitting down. <laughs> she did the Marin High Five unsupported, which means solo, 50-mile FKT. Stands for fastest known time. That's a 50-mile run by herself across the five highest peaks in Marin for a grand total of 12,103 feet of elevation gain, which translates to our metric friends, 3,689 meters of climbing over the weekend. But that was one day. So she just did this last weekend. Congrats, Sarah. What an amazing accomplishment and official FKT. So you're obviously, you got another car because you're going to get another bumper sticker. I think they do have two cars, so that's perfect. Congratulations. You also could stick one on the left side or the right side of your car if you want to hit on yeah. both sides. Uh, now, if you're wondering how I can be like Sarah, not how do you run 50 miles, but how do you get an awesome bumper sticker, well, just join the Low Tide Boys Strava Club so you can get inspired by fellow swim runners as they train all over the world. We have amassed 200, 200, 210, 210 yeah, people in our club. So something must have happened. Yeah. It was probably all the Swim Run Lake James people getting ready to go. And I have to mention, so this is an honorable mention in terms of, so I'm the one who kind of scours for the for the winner, and it's super random, but this one guy uh, posted... Uh, from Puerto Rico? Not from Puerto Rico, okay. but... That's why it's an honorable mention? <laughs> yeah, so honorable mention really goes to Mike McMillan. He did what he called a Swim Run Kettlebell Superset. So hmm. He did this for an hour where he did three rounds with 30 seconds rest in between of pistol lunges, uh, racked lunges, and goblet side lunges. Then he did pull-ups and tripod rows. Then he did shoulder press and bench press. Then he did good mornings, single leg cross, body rolls. And then he did Turkish get-ups and double car- d- double kettlebell carries. So Mike McMillan, wow. dude, I'm not sure that helps you with swim run, but it's pretty <laughs> awesome. I don't think that's beastie. Yeah. That's beastly. I mean, maybe you're just going to like push the water away or something, but that, that, anyway, that's pretty awesome, Mike. Sounds but, like he's trying to do, get some big, big, the massive uh, trash can lid yeah. swim paddles. Yeah. That's probably what move he's, those things. He's, yeah. He's, he's what's, what he's training for. For sure. Well, congrats, Sarah, and congrats, Mike. Mike. 
on your honorable mention, you can get a sticker too. Sure. Just let us know. Just if you let want us one. know. <laughs> now on to this week in Storm Run, powered by RaceID.com. So we've had this segment on for a couple months, and I'm pretty impressed that we always have something to say. So it's nice that there's Swim Run News out yeah. there. Um, we want to thank Race ID for supporting us with this. So Torpedo Swim Run held their uh, Cape race over the weekend in Cape Town, South Africa, and that race looked really epic. It hugged the coastline um, and had a beach finish. Mm. Um, and we're working on getting the folks from Torpedo onto the podcast to talk about the growing swim run scene in South Africa. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be really, really interesting. Looking to forward see to that what's one. Going on. Atala, which is always in the news, announced this week that they're moving the date of their swim run Uta uh, to June 19th and 20th from the original date due to uncertainty around the Swedish restrictions around hosting events. Um, Atala also meant, also announced that they are opening registration for the Isles of Scilly 2022, and they're encouraging participants who want to do that to book their accommodations early since there are a limited number of beds, um, literally, on, on the island, and yeah. uh, they book up to a year in advance. So if you want a bed and you don't want to share a bed with someone, maybe you do want to share a bed with someone, but you want to get on that. Um, and Chipper, remind me to talk to you about whether we should get on that too because <laughs> I really want to do that race. Um, in the weekly, what's kind of becoming the weekly bummer department news, Swimmer in Costa Brava by Head announced last Friday that they had to cancel their event that was slated to happen this weekend on April 17th due to covid restrictions that were put in place by the Catalonian government. Um, no rescheduled date has been announced. And, uh, you know, if I'm trying to be a journalist, the the fodder on social media is people are pretty upset that they canceled it so late because that's an international race where people come from all over. So they canceled it pretty late in the game that's after tough. saying that it looked like it was going to go forward. So that's a huge bummer. And hopefully that race is able to reschedule and, and take care of everybody who really wants to do that event. Anyway, that's it for this week. Feel free to e- email us to tip us off of any swimmer events or swimmer news that you'd like for us to mention on the show. Absolutely. Now for Low Tide Boys updates. So a big thanks, first of all, to everyone that attended our Encore U.S. premiere of All the Way, making of Swim Run Champions. We had special guests Carl Inneroth, who is the director, and George and Pontus, also known as G&P, on to answer some questions after the uh, live viewing which was a great time thank you for that so if you missed the premiere the film is available for rent or purchase at all the way.se or you can go to lowtieboys.com slash all the way and we have all the details on there along with all Extra. of our interviews yeah. surrounding with people surrounding that yep. movie and all the stuff all the content we've been putting out it's all in one place lowtieboys.com slash all the way for all that good stuff and the, all the proceeds from that, whether you buy that on our site or you're not buying it on our site, whether you go through our site, yeah, go through our site or all the way dot se, they go to the Archipelago Foundation, which helps preserve the Stockholm Archipelago, which obviously, as we know, has birthed the sport of swim run. Yeah. Now on to this week's interview with Aaron. Yeah, this was a really fun one. He's the final person for us to interview from the Odyssey crew. We've got we've cut through everybody he was the last one and and we're we're glad we had him last because yeah. he's the ceo over there but he's really a jack of all trades and he has a ton of experience in race directing photography marketing web design um it's uh it's just pretty incredible what what he's <laughs> like his his story so yeah in this interview, we get into his origin story about how he found Swim Run. We covered everything from him getting into endurance sports to, quote, impress the ladies, um, how he became a uber successful triathlon race director in, in Texas, and then how he created some really epic ultra triathlons, um, and how he also told us how Lars moved to Texas and just started crushing all of his races. So <laughs> I thought that so, was a good story. So good on you, Lars. Um, and then, and then we obviously chatted about the two Michigan races uh, for Odyssey on the calendar this year, Ludington and Mackinac Island. And yeah, it was uh, covered a lot of stuff. And a I lot think, of ground. I think this was. Uh, I really enjoyed re-listening. I enjoyed the interview, and I enjoyed mm-hmm. re-listening to it because I because it's I a, just a lot of good gems. It's a different side of kind of. It's a different take on the. It's a different yeah. perspective of Odyssey because all the other interviews that we've done are from race directors or race director and founders. 
So this is kind of the behind the scenes look about how Aaron got to be there and his really impressive pedigree within endurance sports yeah. and all this stuff. And I think really also cool. also his vision for it on like, you know, which is really aligns with obviously what we're trying to do, yeah. which is grow the sport, but make it inclusive, welcome people, making sure that, you know, doing a lot of stuff online, enhancing their presence and being able to answer questions and be personable. I mean, how many race directors do you can you just go up and email or reach out to? And I think they're trying yeah. to be people that you can. So it's, you know, it's it's, it's cool. a really great. And if you've noticed like, oh, Odyssey really cares about me as a person or an athlete and they're not just, oh, they they got my, you know, X amount of dollars and a bib. You you kind of hear why that is and, and how that is in the thought process, not just from Lars and co, but from the entire organization at Odyssey. So I think it speaks highly of, of yeah. them. So you'll definitely enjoy this one. And you'll find out why Bear Spray is mandatory equipment for this ultra triathlon. Yeah. I prefer compass, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're super stoked today to have Aaron Hallian on the show. Aaron, welcome. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you having me. Forward yeah. To talk to you. So, so Aaron is the COO of Odyssey Swim Run. You're a super experienced, like ultra experienced tri triathlon race director. You're a photographer. You live in Michigan. There's just a lot of stuff going on, Aaron. So How we had, we had to we had to find out more since you're the only. You're the you're the 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 missing piece of the Odyssey puzzle yeah. that we haven't quite connected up. We've had from Lars to John to Brent on, and now yeah. Aaron has joined us today. Yeah, I feel like uh, that intro was was quite generous. I'm I'm a jack of all trades, trying to master at least one all the time. So, um, yeah, I I'm excited to be part of Odyssey. I came on uh, in 2019, so I'm just trying to fill any void I can and, and help out and take them to another level. Yeah. Awesome. So we know you have a little bit of a background in kind of ultra or in, in endurance and in, in race directing and supporting kind of the, the endurance space and even ultra endurance. So we'd love to hear a little bit about your, your kind of background on how you got into kind of sport and your sort of experience as a, as a race director, or as an ops person for race track. Sure. Yeah. Um, I, let's see, I, I went to school for graphic design, uh, web design, photography in Chicago. And, uh, shortly after graduating, I worked in Michigan for a while in the early two thousands, um, for, uh, Cadillac and general motors and ended up getting the ax. And, uh, there wasn't a lot of jobs at the time. So, um, one of my high school friends that had moved down to Texas and become a teacher, she just said, Hey, you got nothing holding you up there. Why don't you come on down here? It's, pretty easy to be a teacher. And Texas is one of the states, um, just a handful, I think, in the country that you don't have to have a degree in teaching. You have to take, you know, I think it was six or seven months worth of how to teach kids and um, take, take a, a pretty tough test just on the background of what you wanted to teach the subject. And mm -hmm. so I took that in art and uh, became a high school and middle school art teacher that I split the days and did half and half for, um, I think it was about four years. And before I moved down there, I actually started doing endurance sports to impress the ladies. And uh, I would say that any guy that tells you that's not either. An added Did perk, that work? Does, does it impress a little? Yeah. Oh, of course it worked. Come on. You got a fast uh, bike. <laughs> <laughs> I like that car. Any bike. guy that says that they didn't do that at some point to impress somebody that they liked. I, I don't know. I, I feel like <laughs> maybe they're holding back a little Fair bit, point. but um <laughs> I'm but uh, yeah, so I got into it for that. Never in a million years thought it would take me to where I am now. And um, was just getting kind of bogged down with the teaching, a lot of paperwork, love teaching the kids, but um, kind of wanted more. And I was competing at a pretty high level in Houston in the triathlon and even the running um, world down there. And uh, I don't even remember how it actually got started, but I, I think what it was, was the races in Michigan offered a lot more in the way of trail running. They were cheaper. They gave you more as a, as an athlete. And when I got down to Texas, it was just different. And I had looked at it like, wow, you know, with my background in marketing and, and web design and branding and all that, and even photography, uh, plus the fact that I've been an athlete for, I guess it was going on five, six years at that point. I, um, I thought, 
maybe I should try putting on a race. I could maybe take this market over. It's prime for the, for the, uh, the picking. There were some people that had been in in a while, but it was kind of just plateaued and hanging out there. So um, I did uh, first Halloween run that I had ever put on. That was, I think, 2007 or 2008. And from there, I just kind of progressed to do athlons, triathlons. And I was teaching and putting on races full time, working like, Ooh, wow. I, yeah, I don't know. It must have been 60, 70, 80 hours a week, not sleeping. I did that for almost two years yeah. um, and then quit and took the leap full time for race directing. And uh, the, the short of it from there is just um, I ended up um, owning three of the biggest triathlons next to Ironman, of course in uh, the Houston area and one of the uh, top races in, in Texas, there was a bunch in Austin, obviously, and things like that, but um, we definitely own that Houston market. And then I uh, took on the running community and we started run Houston, a bunch of five K 10 Ks and um, half marathon series. And uh, after a while of doing that, I just kind of, um, you know, we, I like to create things, not necessarily manage them at that time. Um, I'm in a different place now, but, uh, so I ended up selling those and moving back up to Michigan to uh, be near my parents for my kids and and family and stuff. <clears throat> okay. So, but but then yeah. there's but then there's a, another trend. There's a there's a missing piece there before you join Odyssey is you started doing these extreme or putting on these extreme triathlons and that's when I first heard your name was with this race called Alaska Man that I had just become a new dad. Mm. And I was like, I want to stay in shape, so let me do this crazy thing in Alaska. In Alaska. <laughs> and, and and you'll you'll appreciate this, Aaron, and convince five of my friends to also sign up. And one of them wasn't me, so that's even yeah, more impressive. I couldn't convince you. Yeah, I think I tried, yes. but you were like, "What? No, you were kind of anti Iron Man." And it's like, this is this is this is an Iron Man. This is like way harder. It's like you're not helping sell it. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, I ended up not doing it because it's. You know, in hindsight, it was really stupid to think I could have a four month old baby and go to Alaska for a week. But all my friends still did it. And it was a uh, it was an amazing experience for them. But but was, how was that the first year? Yeah. Yeah. Year one. Oh, nice. um, yeah. Um, I, it's, it's funny that you say um, you had a kid and and want to get back in shape because that's actually how the whole thing got started for me, too. Um, mm -hmm. We had our first child in um, 2012. And then uh, in 2014, we had our second child and I had gained a whole bunch of weight. And, and oddly enough, I'm kind of at that point, again, it's a roller coaster ride with me, but um, I gained a ton of weight, sympathy, pregnancy, weight, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so I, I just decided, what can I do to catapult myself into being in shape again? And I, had, I, I didn't get into on the lottery with Norseman. Um, mm -hmm denied me there and so as a race director i emailed them because they have a handful of uh race director spots where you apply and they look it over and they decide collectively if they want you to race or not and you know of course i i built my experience as a race director a dad and all this stuff and uh, definitely put all that in there and you marketed took some time yeah. up and uh they accepted me so um norseman's where that journey kind of began mm -hmm. and the whole idea for alaska man was during the athlete briefing uh, in, at Norseman, they mentioned just periodically through it that they were at the same latitude as Anchorage, Alaska. And a light bulb went off in my head, why the hell isn't there a race like this in the U.S.? And I hadn't even done it at that time. I think maybe <laughs> had, had that uh, light bulb went off at the end, I may not have ever done it. Um, <laughs> You're like now I know uh, why there's not a race like this in the U.S. <laughs> yeah, so I did the race. I started training in February. Uh, had a ton of weight to lose. I lost about 60, 65 pounds, maybe. Damn, um, nice job, dude. I, yeah, I mean it's it's a little easier when you don't have a nine to five. That's like everybody else, you know. You work yeah. from home, so you know there, it's it's easier to lose a lot of weight really quick. But um, anyway, I went and did the race. Had high hopes of you know, black shirt. And, you know, I tested myself and I was like, Oh my gosh, I've never been in this good of shape. I'm going to kick butt. And yeah, I was, I was right towards the end. It was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I got a white shirt, not a black one. I made the um, cutoff for how many people, but not the time cutoff, I believe, okay. or maybe it was the other way around, but I made one of the two cutoffs and didn't make the other one. So anyway, um, fast forward to 2016, I did Keltman as well. Uh, got in on the lottery on that one. Uh, did actually really well on that, uh, quite a bit better than I did at uh, Norseman, and just kind of retired it from there and put on my own. 
and Alaska Man was big. We had 350 people register first year. Mm -hmm. And then every year from then, it just went down about 100 until it just kind of wasn't sustainable. And I don't really know why that was, but... Um, well, I mean, you know. I, I have, so I have a theory on that, and our triathlete listeners yeah. might not want to hear it, but I'm just going to say it because, you know, I have to say it. It's I your think, theory. I think it's because it was so hard. Yeah, I, I, I would agree, I think. I think um, it was too hard for people. And year two, the word got around. Yeah, everyone who <laughs> did it year one, I was like, well, that was a thing. I mean, all my friends that did it, they were like, one of my buddies, you know, had to sit in someone's car after the swim for, for 10 minutes before he got <laughs> on the bike. You know, it was a lot of stuff. It was hard. Yeah, and, you know, we had people drop out, but it wasn't anywhere near. I mean, hell, we had more people not make the first swim at Boston, at the swim <laughs> run in Boston, than we did drop out of Alaska, man. But, um, wow. yeah, I, I think that mixed with word gets out about bears. I mean, second year, we had 22 bears on the course. Now, I think that out of those 22, there may have only been eight or nine unique bears. They were just kind of hopping along on the course. But um, when, you were, when you're required to carry bear spray on you and, you know, there's, yeah. there can be moose on any part of the course and then, uh, you know, orcas on the swim, you know, it, it's got a shelf life, I think, at that point. Yeah, there's a yeah. difference between mandatory equipment as bear spray and a, and then a compass. And uh, <laughs> I don't know how to use either of them, but I'll opt for the compass every time. Bear spray is really easy. Just yeah. point and shoot. Point and shoot. But don't point at yourself. <laughs> you definitely no, don't point at yourself. You'd be in a world of hurt, I would think. <laughs> so you're doing these really uh, crazy endurance triathlons, and you're you're managing them, and then – uh, Odyssey Swim Run had, had already existed with Lars and, and Jeff Cole under a Swim Run USA name, and it was it brought one of the first swim runs to the United States. And yep. so how did Swim Run first kind of come across your your interest, and how did you first hear about it? And then how did you get connected in with Odyssey? So um, we moved to Michigan um, 2018, I believe. Uh, is it 2018? Yeah. And so before that in Texas, I, I, I put those races on and Lars was the guy that came out of nowhere when he moved to Texas and started doing my events and just um, destroying everybody. Yeah. You know, he was always really humble. He was never the guy that like emailed me and said, Hey, I'm going to win this thing. Like, or, or, you know, what? Like John I, don't know. <laughs> I don't remember, but I can't imagine that he did that. But it, regardless, he showed up with them. Uh, his wife and they just destroyed everybody. Like and it wasn't, I mean, I know they were trying, but it just looks so effortless. And here I am on the back of a golf cart leading the run. And you know, this guy's like gaining on the golf cart and <laughs> we're, we're just like, what the hell is happening? And him and Emily just crushed it. Right. And so they won a, a number of my triathlons and we got to be friends through that. And then in 2016, when he put on uh Pasco Bay, he actually didn't reach out to me that year. I don't know if he even knew I was a photographer. And uh, 2017, I believe, was the first year he had reached out. And at that time, you know, I was with Alaska Man, and maybe he heard kind of about me through that even more or whatever. But um, he brought me in as a photographer in 2017, 2018. And I shot uh, for him with that. And I went out to Orcas those, uh, the first two years of that as well. And those were the only two events for a number of years and really just kind of built up a friendship with him and the guys, Brent mm -hmm. and John. And, um, you know, John was racing at the time. Uh, and, and of course, Jeff, who has passed, unfortunately. But, um, you know, when Jeff ended up passing, I think Lars realized that he could do it on his own, but it would be very distracting from family, take up a lot of time. I mean, I know from that perspective, doing it on my own for a number right. of years mm -hmm. before I got my crew in Texas. So um, I think he knew he saw that in our events and it's just, it's common sense, you know? So he knew what kind of productions I put on in Texas and um, asked me to come help him run logistics, get it even more organized and uh, try to take it to a new level with, you know, technology and the website and, photos and marketing and creative and all that stuff. So um, yeah. that's kind of how I came on board and, and uh, the role there. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, I can definitely tell, you know, not a knock on yeah, Lars's, no offense. Uh, <laughs> no offense, Lars and your Canvas skills or, or, or Squarespace or whatever, but um, you know, it, it definitely noticed kind of an up leveling and it is an interesting thing within the swim run community. And Otolo has obviously 
stored, started this kind of snowball they have with the really epic videos and really showcasing the nature that you're racing in. And I think that you personally and the, 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 the media that is put out by Odyssey does a really good job of really showcasing these absolutely stunning areas that these races are happening in. Um, and I, I feel like kind of swim run just lends itself to that, to photography and, and, and video so, so well. Why do you think that is? Yeah, I feel like, I feel like from a lot of perspectives, <laughs> I mean, on the video and the photography side, the athletes are almost secondary. And I hope that doesn't sound bad, but like you look, you look through the lens and you see the landscapes and you're like, well, if I was shooting an event um, that was, you know, in an urban environment, yeah, I can get the buildings or whatever in there and it might look cool. But as a photographer, a videographer, we look at it and we're like, oh my God, we get caught up in the landscape and where we are in the venue. Mm -hmm. And then the person runs through and we're like, oh shit, we got to get a person in this shot, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, when you start with that and you're in awe of the landscape and then the person is almost secondary running through it, you know, you've got it. And as far as the events themselves, what we love most, I think, is that we can keep it very intimate on a, a low registration level. I mean, yeah, we want more people every year, um, but within reason, you know, growing mm -hmm. grassroots keep it a few hundred, 400, and most maybe uh, total athletes. Some of our races are 200, 250. Um, and it allows us to get to know the athletes, at least from a perspective of, if we can't remember all their names, they can at least remember who we are. And one of the good things Lars did with bringing me on is he allowed me for once, I was always the face of my events and I had a crew that I couldn't do it without, but they were kind of, in the, in the shadows, doing all the work, helping me to be a success. Mm -hmm. And I was able to take that role with Lars, which I really liked. Mm -hmm. I am at a point in my life where I really don't want to be that guy that everyone knows his face and, you know, wants to talk to him a lot and stuff. I like taking that back role and, uh, yeah. and letting him, cause let's be honest, it's a success because of Lars and Jeff and their personality and um, how humble they are, how, caring and kind and just outgoing everyone loves that right and i mean i've got that with me too but i like i said i love the back end of running the company uh from a registration standpoint and organization yeah. it just it feeds my ocd you know so um if we're able to fill both those voids and lars can keep doing what he does well i think it really makes people feel like there's there's a home with us and they're not just a registration. They're not just a, yeah. a dollar sign or a number or whatever, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I love that. And I think as someone who's also kind of like on your side of the desk as well, like the, the race directors that I've worked with in the past, the ones that do it the best are the ones who create community the best. And yes. I think that Swim Run already kind of lends itself to creating community, but it really helps – I mean, and everyone we've seen in the space, we haven't met a race director who's kind of a dick, who's like kind of <laughs> into it. Like everyone's been. We, we don't know each other well enough, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's too funny. We might be issuing a correction That's too next funny. week. But, uh, but, but, you know, I, I think, I think what, what Odyssey does really well, I mean, I, I definitely feel like I'm part of like a club, you know, it's like, yeah. oh, it's like we're all showing up. It's going to be tough and we're going to laugh, you know, at the beginning, in the middle and at the end and we'll get it done and we'll help each other do it. Um, and that's, and that's, that's a special thing. Yeah. I, I, when I'm out there, I feel like, you know, when I did the smaller triathlons, uh, smaller distance wise, but with a lot of people, it was always, you know, if a cone got moved or, you know, someone went off course and people followed them. Yeah. That's the biggest example of what, of my thought in 2019 was, oh, what if, what if these people go off course, right? Because there's mm -hmm. flags hanging in trees. And if you're not heads up racing, um, then you get off course and everyone's going to be a lemming in a race. If, the, if their head's down, guy in front of them or, or woman in front of them goes the wrong way, the next two or three follow every single time. Yeah. And so, um, you know, that's kind of always a fear as a race director that people get off course and it happens every single race, whether we mark it perfectly or not. And one of the, one thing I'll never forget is the first race um, that that was really, someone came in and said, Hey, people went the wrong way. Right. That was, I think Orca's 2019 and I'm sitting there and, you know, I think Lars asked him, uh, was there a flag there guys? And they said, well, no, 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 there wasn't. He's like, I'm pretty sure there was. And the way that he talked to them, 
they turned around and said, yeah, I think maybe there was, and I went the wrong way. And then they put their arm around Lars and on his shoulder and they laughed and no one had issue. And the yeah. point of that story is that had that been a normal triathlon, like the ones I ran for years and years. Oh, people would have been having just, panic attacks. Yeah. And, and there's blame and people screaming and yeah. it, 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 you get so wrapped up in it. And that's why I like these so much more. It's so relaxed yeah. and it's so people take responsibility, whether it's us, whether it's them, whoever it is for anything that happens out there, you well, know, and it's, it's awesome. Well, you know, when, when we did Casco, which was our first Odyssey race, you know, we show up at this expo and, you know, I've been doing this professionally for a number of years now, and we walk in and it's like, this, this is so disorganized. Like, they, well, well, we were in our like, post. We had just sort of, we had a kid each. We're yeah. kind of just getting back, similar to you. Like, yeah, we were definitely we're in our post-triathlon get, phase. Yeah. But we show up to this expo, and there's just a lot of stuff going on, and we're like, all right, I guess that's just the way it is. We sit down, and we hear Lars, and he's just saying, like, you know, everything is kind of, like, vague. It's like, yeah, it's like, you know, 18-ish miles and, you know, four-ish miles of this and two-ish miles of that. And we were like, what is going on? You know what? I actually, <laughs> funny enough. We're going to die out so there. Funny. No, I mean, it was so funny. It was like, like now it totally makes sense. But like going into that space and just being like, oh, yeah, it doesn't all have to be like totally mapped out perfectly. Like it can, it can just be, you know, an estimate because things happen and it is on you. Like you got to get from A to B. Here's a map. Here's some flags like heads have up fun. And, and go out there. Yeah, I mean, in uh, in Austin, and just a, another kind of funny example of that. On the, I think it was second to last swim, um, a couple people. It, it was one team or two teams, I don't know, but they came around the corner, and I was on the dock for the last swim. People are jumping in. I see these people swimming around the, the corner of the rocks, and they just kept swimming. And they had combined like two or three swims and not ever got out of the water. Just well, well, they were going long. They went well, real long. Yeah. It, it was like the guy said it was like it's two and a half, three miles swim by the time <laughs> and they got out and they weren't even the best. They were like, Yeah, I think we totally screwed up. And, and you know, we saw that flag, but I, we just don't care. Like, we'd rather swim than run. And we we're like, Well, I, I think well, well, technically you you're DQ, but you guys good? And they're like, Oh, awesome. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> great time. That's, awesome time. <laughs> that's great. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, in Austin, we managed to just blow past a cone with an arrow pointing left. Yeah, that was kind of right near the finish line. That was we, me. That was me. That I we started. Um, we we just did a little victory lap. Yeah, we did a little line. a little hot lap. Almost we could have we could have almost ran through the finish line. And Lars was like going to get a drink or something. He goes, "You guys are done." We're like, "No, where where's the entrance where's the last again?" <laughs> you know, like, we you're just back there. Yeah, oh, you played it off real cool, like like you. Were oh just, yeah. You know, yeah. Oh, we played it. Yeah, like we're high fiving. You know, yeah, uh, we just Boston Wet to... Sox that had just destroyed everybody and yeah, Marcus they, and stuff. Give your fans, fans what they want. Before yeah, they out there. <laughs> exactly. Give, yeah, what the fans want. And I, <laughs> it's so funny on, you know, going back to sort of how, as a team, Chris and I's kind of mentality has changed throughout these races is that I specifically remember maybe a month or two weeks before Casco Bay emailing Lars and being like, Hey, dude, this race is in a couple of weeks, but you don't even have the distances for the for the legs. Are you gonna send this out? You know, I was getting really stressed about not being able to have exactly, you know, the 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 right marker, uh, what mile, and and so I can know like mentally to prepare myself. But now I'm like, I welcome the yeah the unknown of it. Yeah. Well, well I mean, it was also our first like super real su- swim yeah, run, so. True. So, I mean, just that's the year where we just jumped off the dock. I remember being in the um, people, if you've listened to the show, you've heard the story before. We're sitting there and it's like, there's a dock. And I just look over at Chipper. It's like, we're jumping off that fucking dock, basically. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really amazing how uh, Odyssey, you know, like we're talking about, you know, has built this community and now it's, it's just continues to expand. And obviously it makes sense that there's some Michigan races because since that's your backyard, I mean, yeah. y- you definitely know where these hidden gems are. I mean, the two races that are on the books this year, Ludington and uh, Mackinac. 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 I've even heard of these places. You, you say Mackinac. Well, that's, <laughs> that's how much I've even heard of these places. I don't even know how to say it. Like... <laughs> Mackinac and, 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 and Ludington, like these, I would never even be able to find these places on a map because I guess I haven't spent that much time in Michigan, but these two courses look awesome. So, so how did that happen? How did you kind of come up with these, uh, two home, 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 home field course. advantage yeah, for yourself? Home courses. Yeah. When I moved here, um, 
think Lars' eyes lit up a little bit uh, in the way that he had been, I think, scouting out uh, uh, Traverse City for a while. Um, he he knows about Michigan. I mean, Lars travels everywhere. He, he knows a lot of areas all over the country through his background um, in the sport and everyone he knows. Mm-hmm. But um, he mentioned, oh, you know, you're close – close being, you know, three and a half hours away, but you're close enough to Traverse City where you can just chat up there and come on back and one day drive up if you needed to go check it out. And, you know, as a photographer, a landscape photographer, I travel all over the state anyway. So I just kind of, whenever I go to shoot something, I I check out the area and see if it is well suited for a swim run. And I grew up here. So I know Lake Michigan, Lake Huron, you know, the upper peninsula, not quite as well, but I, I know good enough. And, um, yeah, the Great Lakes, it, it, for people that haven't been to the Great Lakes, especially Lake Michigan and Lake Huron, um, Lake Superior is way too cold to do anything in. But it's they're like oceans when you look at them. You can't see the other side. They're yeah. crystal mm-hmm. clear. They're beautiful. White sand beaches. And um, I just thought it would, it would be a travesty not to have at least one race here. Uh, I didn't really expect two. It kind of just happened that way. And so I, I don't know. I, I explored a few other places. And we went up, I went and saw Traverse City and I had talked to them. It's not, it's not really comfortable for uh, a swim run, in my opinion. And so I kind of talked Lars out of that. The swims are really long. Um, They're not kind of island hopping or peninsula hopping or whatever, whatever whatever suits the area. But um, plus at that time, Iron Man was talking to them. They have a million events there. It's really populated. There's too many events. The people that live there don't really like it. Um, as far as more events mm-hmm. coming in. Mm-hmm. And I think you guys can tell from the backlash, if you saw that the 70.3, the Traverse City event yeah. had um, from the Leland Off Peninsula and probably some locals that are just, you know, I mean, it's like that anywhere, right? You bring in too many events and close streets down and it's just at some point there's a breaking point. So um, I wanted somewhere that was a little more indicative of how Swim Run does it, how they, Orcas is a good example on Orcas Island, there's really nobody there. People live there, but you don't really see anybody. It's you're in the forest and you're in the lakes. And that's part of it. That's solitude. So, um, Les Chineau was our first one that we found in 2019 Mm -hmm. and it had the support of the community, but it's so small that you still get that being out in nature feel, um, lots of docks and forests and single track trails and then small communities and things like that. So it was great. And, um, we had to unfortunately cancel last year because of COVID on that event. And then going into this year, it just, um, long story short, we wanted to open registration. Um, some of the people that were in charge of helping us uh, weren't really comfortable with it opening when we needed it to open. Mm -hmm. And so we had to kind of move on as a business, no hard feelings there. I love the community. The people are awesome. And who knows what the future holds there. But as of now we had to leave just because, you know, we had open registration. We had to find somewhere. So yeah. that's where Ludington and uh, Mackinac Island came in. If you live anywhere in the Midwest and even anywhere in the country, most people know about Mackinac Island. There's over a million visitors a year that go there. Uh, no, no cars, horse-drawn buggies, ride your bike around it. Uh, so that's, there's a reason it's the jewel of the Midwest of the Great Lakes. Uh, and then Ludington is just awesome. I mean, I feel like it doesn't get as, as much attention as places like Mackinac, but Ludington, in my opinion, is, is the coolest state park in Michigan. White sand beaches everywhere. The city's great. Tons to do. Camping like nowhere else. If you love camping, it's, it's just awesome. And I mean, out of all the places in Michigan for landscape photography, I've gone back there four times and not gone back wow. anywhere else more than once, if that tells you. So, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Awesome. And I love how Odyssey has kind of split it up to where it's like, okay, John and Lars can kind of handle Casco Bay, and Brent has you each have your own, your home races that you go, but you're under the the broader organization and umbrella of Odyssey. I think it's a pretty pretty smart play there. And um, yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, you guys had to cancel the ma- or postpone the the majority of your races, but you were you 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 got Austin off last year, which we were lucky enough to to go out there and and experience that, and it just seemed like so fitting of like a, a just a, like a glimmer of hope of like the whole year was kind of so shitty, and then at that <laughs> one bit yeah. for however long you're racing for, it was quote unquote back to normal. 
and that like felt so good and the whole vibe of the weekend and everything was so great um and you guys pulled that off really well excellent pro uh covid protocols yeah. i was never concerned about any you know, any sort of thing it was it was just really great and wanted to say kudos on that and we know it's been a tough year for all all sort of races so yeah. hearing that you kind of had to move on from a certain race i don't I don't think that as oh no you'll never race there again, but it's like you got to do what you got to do to kind of stay afloat and and to keep everything running and right. those are the calls that you got to make sometimes and and like you said yeah no no hard feelings there you know and I, and just to add to that I think I, I don't know if Lars actually just told us this but um you know for Austin like he really wanted to have that race happen for the swim run community like he was like oh people have just been bummed out all these races getting canceled like let's just try to get one in for them. Um, and that definitely, that was the vibe that I felt that whole weekend. We're just yeah. like, they were just so happy that they were able to put something on for us. Um, well, so that you guys were able to put something on for us. It's funny that you say that. Cause that's, we knew, I think in our hearts, Lars and I knew that that race was going to happen probably from the start. I mean, sure. There's a roller coaster of up and down and who's going to make what happen. But uh, I mean, it's Texas, Texas <laughs> it's is going to do what Texas is going to do. And it's one of the reasons that I love Texas. And uh, it's my second home. I, I think of myself as a Texan still to this day, even though I've spent way more time in Michigan. But at the end of the day, we were very uncertain all year. We would get pockets of hope where we really pushed it out to everyone that, yeah, we think this is happening. And then we didn't get anyone telling us, no, it couldn't. But they're like, oh, you know, guys, the infection rate's gone way up and, you know, in Maine or Orcas. And so we never got a no when we held out hope and, you know, it obviously reached a point when we had to say no, but with, with Austin, I think Lars, his attitude from the start was like, that is a race we are having. I don't want to hear this canceled bullshit. It's not mm-hmm. happening. <laughs> um, and I think that that came from the fact that it's out in the middle of nowhere, even though it's kind of close to Austin, there's still not, it's not a population out there. It's a park. And, you know, we had to deal with maybe two or three total people and yeah. there's really no one out there. I mean, besides the people coming out for the swim run, as long as we could keep that safe, then, you know, what's the issue? What's, what's the problem? So right. um, we kind of knew that was going to happen the whole time. Uh, really positive about that. And it was awesome because I think a month and a half before the race or so, we had like a third of what we ended up with. So it was one of those things where we were like, Oh crap, is this, <laughs> is this race going to, going to disappoint with the registration numbers too or are we going to like blow this out of the water and uh, you know wow the last month they really piled on we had almost 300 people sign up so we were over the moon we were ecstatic about that and like you said just to or like Lars said you know we got to do this for the swim run community so they they rewarded us with a great time lots of registrations positive feedback we loved it so oh it was great and we were ultimately rewarded with these boss hoodies that we got which i have not had mine taken by my mine's, partner mine's yet, been taken i've stopped trying it's she has it's hers. she's got yeah. it so we love the hoodies those got solid what is that about sweatshirts where it doesn't matter how big they are our wives will just take them and we'll never see them again oh yeah it's like it's like i just got you one that uh that's for you i want yours it's cozier okay. yours is bigger and more comfortable yeah yeah. Um, and we're doing that this year. We just decided we haven't really publicized it, but we're going to go with sweatshirts. Ooh, an exclusive. Not exactly sure. This uh, is a show which, exclusive you know, right here, everybody. What'd you say? This is an exclusive, exclusive. a low tide boys exclusive. Uh, yeah, we don't, we're not going to do it every year, but it was popular at Austin. So we want to do it with all the events and the ones we're doing this year are different enough. They're actually running sweatshirts. You can wear them when you're training. Oh, cool. um, yeah. So uh, we'll do it for Austin again. And if you get that one, then it's not the same as last year. So, uh, kind of cool. I love it. Awesome. That is cool. Thank you. It's good. You're like listening to the community and yeah. there are everyone's like, yeah, these are great. And you're okay. We'll do more of this and stuff. And, you know, honestly, it's, it's kind of, it's why we, we love swim run so much because if it was, if Odyssey was just a money-making machine, they would go, well, the margins aren't great on sweatshirts. We're going to go with the $5 technical polyester yeah. T-shirt that people are not going to get as much value because you're going to make $3 more kind of thing, you know, and it's like you're doing this yeah, for this totally. community. Oh, and that that was always my move when I was doing consulting for race directors. It was just like up your swag game, bro. 
never yeah. you never go wrong with having a shirt that someone would actually want to wear. Yeah, and that's the thing too. We it's been kind of an adjustment for me going from the races I had in Houston, where obviously just on the business side, you know, uh, registrations are a lot less than they are for extreme tries and, and mm-hmm. uh, swim run. So you know, Lars saying, "Hey, we've got to give them more." It's only right, you know. They're paying more; they need to get more. So. Um, yeah, we're always trying to, whether it's, you know, stuff that comes right out of the budget or whether it's stuff that we can get sponsors to, uh, throw in the bag, Mm -hmm. we're always interested in lining more of that up and trying to do more for the athletes. So love it. definitely appreciate that. And want to continue to do that. Awesome. So the Odyssey schedule this year, you have two brand new races in Michigan, and then you have your kind of your staples, your East coast staple. Casco Bay and the West Coast staple, Orgas Island, and then now the new Southern Midwest. Staple. Oh, you got Austin. Austin. Yeah. Did I, I say Midwest? Is it? Yeah, that's not the Midwest. Midwest. <laughs> that, that, it's in Texas, people. Yeah, it's in Texas. <laughs> the uh, deep yeah. South. Deep South. Deep South. Yeah. Maybe not the deep South. I don't know if that's technically considered deep South, but. Yeah. Well, if we say enough <laughs> phrases, we can edit in the right one. <laughs> 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 Texas. It's in we'll, we'll do some creative editing. Yeah, I mean, and I, I think this year um, we were lucky enough to be part of a, of a webinar that Odyssey put on, I guess, I don't know when this show is going to air, so I'm not even going to say, oh, it was a couple weeks ago, so I don't know when, it, when it's going to when it's gonna make sense. It was, a while, it, was, it was a while back. A while back. A few weeks um, back. And it was, uh, it was really cool, and I think, you know, going back to, to how you guys are trying to be personable and have everyone kind of know who you are, be able to ask questions. I think that, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to seeing those continue to happen because to me th- that just sets Odyssey apart so much from other race directors. Like I don't know race directors that are putting on these sort of webinars, just introducing themselves and their background and, yeah. you know, and just being like, Hey, we're people and we're here to help you and have you have a good time. Um, who, whose idea was it to, to come up with, with these, uh, with a series? So that came from me, um, and the reason is because I did that for Alaska Man and ultimately mm. Iceland and um, uh, Aloha Man as well uh, mm-hmm. through the years. And especially with Alaska, it was a huge success. I mean, people feel there's a lot of anxiety going into events like this, I think, um, for people that especially are new and haven't done it before. And so having a, an outlet where they can ask questions and see the actual person in charge of it. I think if nothing else, that just comforts them a little bit more than looking at a website. You know, um, yeah. we can have all the information we want on the website. And like you, you said earlier, um, when you first did it, there wasn't a whole lot of information like distances on maps or anything like that. And while I agree with you, after you've done one, you get it right. And you can go to the start and say, whatever, we're just going to follow the, the tape on the trees and get to the finish and have fun and be, yeah. be relaxed and chill about it. But there, this is a niche market still. Mm-hmm. And so our job is to bring three people through the pipeline and whether that's from swimming or running or uh, triathlon or just nothing at all. My brother, for instance, not an endurance athlete, but training his ass off to do uh, Ludington this year. And nice, so nice. those people are maybe not my brother, but uh, the people I'm talking about from triathlon, for instance, a number of them are type A, I think a majority. And so they look at a website and if they're thinking, I don't know if I want to do this or not, but then they see all that information, whether it's really that important that they have it or not is irrelevant. It shows them the level of commitment that we have to making sure they're comfortable with it. And then the webinars or uh, whatever you want to call them, the online meetings, those take it to a whole other level of comfort, I think. And um, I'll say too, that we go into those thinking, okay, we're, we're going to relay this information, answer these questions we're always open to hearing things, but we rarely get someone asking something we haven't thought of. But when that happens, that's it's, if we get one question that we haven't thought of by this time in our, our careers, that makes 12 different webinars completely worthwhile for us yeah. Yeah. because there's that one gem that we can add to that portfolio of questions on the Q and a yeah. that, wow, how did we not think of that? You know? So we both get it, uh, get something out of it, the athletes and us as race drivers. You know, you know, you know what that reminded me of um, when we did our Austin course preview episode and we're kind of breaking down the course and what we think, um, you know, Lars helped us make that. But then he also listened to the final product. And I think I was pontificating about it's like, oh, if you're going to take nutrition, 
the aid station is at the end of the swim, so make sure you have some water, bring Before, some water yeah. with you or something like that. And and Lars heard that and he was like, oh yeah, that doesn't make sense. We should just have a, another. We should move the aid station before the swim so people can hydrate and like before they go like, into the water. Yeah. And it was like you know, and I just threw that out there. It's like, oh hey, be prepared. And he he just went it's like, yes, that is an improvement on the race experience, and let's just do it. And I just thought that was like, I mean, the the, the humility to just admit that. I mean, you could have just changed it without saying anything, but um, yeah, it, it was just. Uh, it's emblematic of what I think Odyssey does really well and the reason that Cosine. we really care about it. Cosine. Well, just something to add to that, you know, I was, I, I think the only word, word I can use is crucified for years in Houston as I started it. Now, that being said, I also have to say that there, I had a ton of support and catapulted to the top through registrations. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I am someone that changes things a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, I like to think out loud. I like to put things in place. Um, maybe sometimes a little too sooner publicly than I should, because we make changes after, but the point is, I, it it speaks to what you just said. I would make changes on things for the better. I'm not one and neither is Lars to put something out there to the public because we think it's the best course of action. Um, just like I did early in my career and then realize, Oh shit, this is, something I can do better. I found a better way. I found a better piece of the course, whatever. And I change it. I don't ask people's opinions outside of our company on, Oh, what do you guys think? We know by now if something's better on a course. So we Mm -hmm. make the change, we tell everyone. And then if we see another change, I mean, hell, if we see 10, 12 changes, we'll change it, but we're never going to change it to make it shorter because we just don't want to do the work or make it easier on ourselves or easier on the athletes. Mm -hmm. It is always going to be with their best interest at mind, whether that's safety, whether it's a better experience, more enjoyable, whatever, but we're not going to be shy about, Oh, it's locked in. We really can't make that change. I'm afraid of being confronted about changing things too much. And I mean, there's a lot of people that don't like that, but at the end of the day, they're, they come back to us a majority of them. And they say, you know what? I doubted changes you guys made last minute, but that was a hell of a race. I won't doubt that again. Good job guys. And so we're going to keep doing that, you know? Yeah. And I think, you know, at some point you just have to embrace the ambiguity of swim run and that's swim runner. Yeah. And that's the beauty of it. Right. It's like, I mean, the conditions can be different. I mean, you see this at the world championship one year, it's flat and warm. And the next year it's, you know, three foot white cap swells, um, and you just never know what you're going to get. Um, and well, I the thing is too, is that these aren't closed courses. Yep. You know, if you have something and, and I'll use Ironman cause it's the most widely recognizable race out there really. But, um, Ironman for instance, is a completely closed course on, on 99.9% of what they do. Um, the bike is the exception, obviously on some of it, but mm-hmm. the, the point is they can just say, this is what it is. And maybe they have to change a few things along the way, but it's not a living, breathing kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Whereas ours, we don't shut anything down at all. Like, I mean, maybe some lanes in the in the swim, some crossovers and shipping channels and stuff are delayed slightly by the Coast Guard. But the point is, we have to roll with it because things change. I mean, Ludington, for instance, if we were going to have that in May, which obviously it's in October now, but there there's birds that nest in different places and they're... Uh, protected and the guy the the rain park ranger was like look that bird could nest anywhere on your course and you might have to change 10 different areas if that happens you cannot run through there i mean that's just an example right yeah. so um I gotta yeah they're living bird. breathing things with us not things we shut down so 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 we we've been chatting with you for a while aaron and we really appreciate this conversation so i so i want to i want to i want to let you go with this how yes. stoked are you for swim run for the swim run season this year? Are you like super stoked or just regular? I have been locked in my house for a year. (laughs) (laughs) I, I mean, that's a little dramatic. I (laughs) I was ecstatic to go down to Austin. Um, I hate flying and my, I'll just outright say it. My fear of flying had made me commit to driving cross country a couple times, but I fell in love with that because you get to see and, and talk to everyone along the way. And so my goal this year is to drive uh, to every race myself from wow, Michigan. Wow! And, yeah. And it's like 12,000 miles of driving. Right. Um, but the point is speaking to the excitement, that's how excited I am. I want to drive across the country, multiple directions. I cannot wait to see everyone. I mean, we all feel like this 
quite frankly. I know Lars is beside himself excited. Mm -hmm. um, so we just hope everyone else is just as excited and that, and you know, um, they're ready to go because it's going to take a lot for us to cancel anything. I'll tell you that this year. <laughs> hell, hell yeah. yeah. Well, we need to get you a low tide boys bumper sticker on that car if you're driving twelve thousand miles. That's a lot of <laughs> so we'll make Let's sure we, we get we get one of those over to you. But uh, you want to for... wrap the car? I mean, I'm sure oh, you guys could yeah. find someone that would wrap it. Yeah, time. vinyl I mean, wrap. Sure, yeah. I got it. Yeah. Uh, we're doing. Well, yeah, I can. I have a paintbrush too. Yeah, can, can you just design that for us? <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a lease. Be careful. Okay, well, that, we might that might be tough then. Anyway, Aaron, really appreciate you coming on, and we we just love the the up leveling that you've kind of brought to the the Odyssey internet game and the videos and photography that that you've been putting out is super amazing and and impressive and is really instrumental in, in helping attract more people to the sport. So thank you for that, and uh, we look forward to seeing you out there multiple times this year. For sure. Yeah, thanks guys. It's been a lot of fun, and we're definitely look forward to seeing you guys doing more with you and. Um, everyone out there listening, if you're new to it, jump in, guys. We'd love to see you and have you at our races this year. So, absolutely, thanks, guys. Awesome. Yep. Have a good one, Aaron. Thanks, man. You too. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Low Tide Boys, a swim run podcast. Make sure to subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast and leave a review on iTunes if you're so inclined. You can also sign up for a newsletter at lowtideboys.com. That's boys with a Z. And check out our meme page at the Low Tide Boys on Instagram. If you have any questions, or suggestions for the show, drop us an email at lowtideboys at gmail.com. We'd like to thank Writing Easy Records for our show music and, of course, our wives for their support and tolerance of our swim run activities, hobbies, and other bullshit we do. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> you can support our efforts on Patreon. Until next time, get out there and go for a swim. And then a run. And then another swim. Then another run. And then another swim. And then run to the finish line. And just keep going until you're done. Yes. Or until run you to cross the, or, the finish line. Or run to the car. Or run to your car. Somewhere. Just keep running. Please.